Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to you to join us on this Thursday evening. Now, today is the last day of April and we are entering a long weekend. How is everyone doing? <laughs> I think uh, pretty much stuck at home. But no worries, learning never stops. We can not meet in person, but we can meet online via webinar. So uh, my name is Richard, and uh, please allow me a few minutes to introduce uh, the organizer, who is the Online Traders Club, as well as 1M65. And um, let me just start on. Huh? All right. So uh, the organizer is the Online Traders Club Singapore, one of the organizers, and it's uh, in short, it's called OTCS. And OTCS stands for Online Traders Club Singapore. We are a non-profit society formed in 2005 run by volunteers. And we are a community of traders and investors. And to me, OTCS stands for a place where we network, share, and learn. And we do it through a series of workshops, courses, and a library. For workshops and webinars, such as the one you are attending right now, we aim to hold about 10 to 12 a year, and it is free for our members. However, because of the COVID-19 situation, we have uh, gone from in-person uh, web workshops onto uh, webinars online, and we open up uh, free for all, free for public, as well as our members to attend so that more can benefit from it. As for... Uh, this picture is taken in January at SGX at uh, one of our in-person workshops where we hold our annual event at SGX, who is uh, one of the sponsors, as well as SOCGEN, uh, one of the sponsors for the event, and it was very well attended. For courses, we aim to have about three to six a year, and normally we will approach a trainer and then we will do a group buy with the trainer to get better prizes for our members to attend. For our library, we have about over $6,000 worth of resources that our members can borrow. And if you'd like to find out what are the titles and how to borrow, please visit onlinetradersclub.org, click on the library link, and you can find out there. Okay, to me, OTCS stands for a place where we network, share, and learn, and we do it through a series of workshops, webinars, courses, and a library. So the next question is, how much, right? Now, the normal price is $120 a year. But for a time-limited period only, you can get a membership for only $60 a year. Normally, when we hold our in-person workshop, we also provide dinner. So if you come for 10 to 12 workshops, basically, your membership is free because you got dinner. To find out more how to join our club, please visit onlinetradersclub.org. Now, to find out what are the upcoming workshops that the club is holding, please join the OTCS Telegram channel. Uh, just have to search for Online Traders Club in Telegram and then join the channel. It is not a chat, so it will only uh, have any messages and uh, notify you when there is some event coming up. Or you can also subscribe to our mailing email mailing list at our website. And very importantly, OTCS is not just run by the elected committee. We are also supported by a group of good friends who are members of the club, and we call them OTCS crew. They are the unsung heroes to help us to run physical events uh, while the uh, committee focuses on uh, some other important um, Pass. Very importantly, the disclaimer, and let me read it. You are responsible for your own profits and losses. Speakers' opinion are their own and does not represent OTCS opinion. OTCS is office holders uh, and associates, sponsors are not responsible nor liable for your losses. OTCS events are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as advice. And when in doubt, please seek professional help. And just want to highlight that later on, I'm sure you have questions that you'll ask our special speaker tonight, Mr. So Chin Heng. But please hold those questions until the end and we'll give you uh, 
Q&A segment where you can ask all the questions you want. Okay. So in the meantime, we focus on the insights and knowledge that Mr. So has to share with us. And I'll just like to emphasize that although Mr. So is the Deputy Chief Executive of CPF Board, tonight's webinar, he is speaking on a personal basis. And our co-organizer for tonight's event is none other than 1M65 Movement and his co-founder, Mr. Lu Cheng Chuan, is the person who connected us to Mr. So. So can we invite Mr. Lo to give an introduction to Mr. So for us tonight? And before you do that, please remember to join Mr. Lu's uh, 1M65 Movement Telegram group chat. You can search for Lu. 1M65 in Telegram and join the group chat. There are over 3,000 of us inside there and we talk about things about finance and mainly about how you can maximize your wealth creation by using your CPF. Okay, so isn't it interesting? Almost every one of us has CPF, right? So why not learn more about how you can maximize your CPF since it's a money that you can't touch for a long, long time anyway, right? So without further ado, let me hand over the mic to Mr. Lu to introduce Mr. So. Okay. Lu, yeah, yes. Great. Um, thank you. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Good evening to everybody. Uh, my name is Lu. Uh, I hope that some of y'all would know me um, because I think some of y'all are from that 1M65 group. Uh, it's a great honor today that we have got Mr. So with us today. Uh, I would do a, a, a introduction of Mr. So now. Mr. So and I have known each other for close to two decades. He's not only a good friend to me, he's also a great financial mentor to me for all these uh, two decades. I've mentioned many times uh, in my talks um, that after my financial bottoms, after the Asia financial crisis, I was lucky to meet a financial guru. This financial guru has not allowed me to talk, to tell anybody he's the financial guru, but today uh, I've got his permission to finally reveal the secret uh, elusive uh, person. Now, this great man is Mr. So. So Mr. So is a is an incredible self-taught financial advisor and uh, sorry self-taught financial investor, and arguably he manages one of the biggest funds in the world, which is our CPF. So since twenty years ago, Mr. So and I will meet up once every month for coffee and tea, and during this session he will impart incredible financial know-how to me. Every almost every month for the last twenty years, and over this time he will teach me. He has taught me and continue to teach me many aspects of financial management. So things I've been sharing with everybody, how compounding frugality, how to, how to do your insurance properly, achieving the right uh, asset allocation mix, uh, how to stay invested in financial storms and things like that. Anyway, fast forward 20 years uh, to this day, I've built up my, my wealth and I built up also uh, my, my enough uh, financial uh, freedom uh, to pursue all my passion. All this financial knowledge I ever share with you, all the Kung Fu that I ever know, were selflessly imparted by Mr. So. And what did he ask for return after all these 20 years of mentorship? He didn't ask for anything except for me to bless others with the financial know-how that has imparted for me. And that's why we started the 1M65 movement, hoping to inspire more Singaporeans to be financially wise and independent, just as how Mr. So inspired me. So every month, even even during now COVID nineteen times, I'll give uh, you no know, two to three talks uh, to educate fellow Singaporeans how to become millionaires and nowadays even multi millionaires. To date, I've given seventy five talks to probably twenty thirty thousand people, and written many articles that are read by many. We have got an incredible one m six five Telegram discussion group. Uh, we group together a community to inspire and in, in, and educate each other, uh, just as Mister So imparted imparted to me. Uh, by the way, he's also one of the expert members in the community in the Telegram group. So if you have questions, uh, you, you can also ask him uh, in the Telegram group. So please join our Telegram group uh, in the channel. Uh, this, uh, I think Richard got it uh, on the slide. So today we are very blessed to have Mr. So to give this webinar to everybody. I urge everyone to take advantage of this session, to learn from him, to suck his brain dry, you know, and uh, really, really, uh, if we can, you know, uh, give a round of applause in our in our, in our private places, uh, uh, in our homes, uh, to, you know, to welcome this great man. So over to you, uh, Chining.
Hello, everybody. Chinning here. <clears throat> I trust that you can uh, hear me and, and see me. Thanks, everybody, for joining in. And very happy to be here to share this uh, uh, session with you. Thanks uh, to Lou for your very kind and uh, generous words. I count it uh, my, my pleasure and my privilege to uh, work with uh, Lou through his uh, financial and life journey together and count Lou as a very uh, dear friend. And, uh, and thanks also to Richard for putting together this uh, webinar. Don't know Richard that, that well so far, but uh, hope that I can uh, get to know him uh, much better. Maybe a, a little bit about how this uh, webinar come about. It, it started with uh, Lou with his uh, 1965 uh, Telegram group. And um, so uh, I joined, I joined uh, the group as one of the participants, uh, partly to uh, support Lou and uh, partly out of curiosity. What's, what's happening? What's, what's this uh, group about? And I say, uh, the group uh, blow my mind away. It's a very uh, uh, lively group, a very fast uh, growing group. I think it's been around in just a matter of weeks and, uh, and now it has about 3,000 over members. So every day you see people streaming in and it's, and it's a very vibrant group. So a lot of uh, uh, rich and uh, very useful discussions uh, about the personal finance and CPF. And I would say the, the group members are very well versed helping each other um, with the, the answers and questions. So along the way, as we uh, as I talked to Lou first and later on with uh, Richard, we thought that maybe it may be useful to um, do this uh, seminar, sort of, sort of like put together a lot of the uh, CPF questions that we asked uh, together so that uh, it can make a, a more holistic sense to some of the people, especially some of the people who are newer to, to this uh, game, uh, not too, not too sure about what how this uh, CPF can help uh, you you build your fin uh, financial uh, journey together. Um, then as for uh, Richard and OTCS, I must admit I don't know them very well. I attended the, the webinar that Richard hosted uh, last uh, week. Uh, was done by two young gentlemen about the in the thirties uh, about the stock investment, and I must say they are very impressive. They reminded me of uh, Warren Buffett, and I hope that can uh, get to know uh, them and the uh, OTCS and Richard uh, better uh, in time to come. I uh, also understand uh, some of my family members and uh, uh, friends uh, who also joined in. Uh, thank you very much for your support. And uh, okay, so we'll get straight into the session. You'll give me uh, some time, a couple of seconds to uh, load up my slide. Uh, this is the uh, first time in my life I'm doing a webinar. So uh, ask for your forgiveness if uh, things don't go uh, smoothly as they should. Okay, I think you should see my opening slide now. The title of my uh, presentation is uh, Maximizing Your CPF. Um, I'm a bit like the Lou, maybe a, a milder version. I prefer to sprinkle some of my thoughts with a uh, uh, singlish. So my preferred title actually uh, is a uh, Max Kaleo, your CPF. Um, this is a, a, a common phrase that uh, some of my colleagues and I use uh, while in the course of work. We are ardent CPF uh, supporters and believers about the product that we, with our company uh, uh, administer. Basically, we are always thinking of uh, ways and means to put as much uh, money into our CPF as possible. Uh, the subtitle, uh, your peace of mind during a COVID-19 crisis. Thanks to Richard for suggesting that. I, I think uh, certainly, you know, uh, those of us who have been uh, investing our funds in the uh, equity markets, stock markets, uh, this time, it will be a very uh, volatile and traumatic uh, time. Uh, things seem to be a bit better in the recent weeks. But, uh, we will just recall back um, in the month of March with uh, markets going down 20, 30 uh, percent. Very short time, record uh, period of time. It can be very tremendous uh, and very uh, unner unnerving for us. And in, in this backdrop, if you put this your, your CPF side by side to it, you see, wow, it's a world of difference. And indeed, uh, that's the, the way to be. That's the way we should be seeing. Uh, we should uh, be Chin, seeing. Uh, interrupt you here. Sorry, um, yes. Your screen has some problem. Uh, Richard, you want to help? Yeah, Mr. So, I think uh, you need to reshare your screen. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. Give me a minute. Huh? 
Yeah. You need to cancel the screen share and then uh, redo it. And then make sure you choose uh, share the desktop. Okay. Oh, is it now? Nothing yet. So slowly, uh, we try again. Click on the plus sign. Okay, then click on share the desktop. See if the browser prompt you for permission. Yes, okay, see your screen. Please go into presentation mode. Yes, and then the click the height. Fantastic. Sorry to interrupt. Please continue. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that uh, technical problem. Okay, so uh, let's move on. So this handsome man is uh, me, <laughs> and I'm uh, speaking in my personal capacity, so don't blame anything I say on the, my employer for tonight. Um, okay, so when you talk about CPF, you talk about the retirement. Retirement is the, the, the mission of the CPF board, and this is something which uh, Lou usually would uh, judge me. He has uh, his own uh, notion about what retirement is. It's a lot of cock cock word and uh, thing, thing, things like that, not very sexy. But semantics aside, uh, uh, CPF is for retirement, so it's important to talk about that. And from the financial planning perspective, uh, when we talk about retirement, or more precisely about being retirement ready, we're talking about that, that specific point in, in time in your life when you are able, you know, because you have to build up your assets, you have to take care of your liabilities, you're able to fund the rest of your life without having to depend on work, on work. Right? So whether you actually work or not, uh, that's a separate issue. And so the central issue about the retirement and the retirement planning is this question. How much do I need for retirement? How much do I need to be able to say that I'm uh, retirement ready? I can, uh, I can, uh, I no longer need to depend on, the, on my work. Right? I'm still okay for the rest of my life. So there are many uh, factors to consider. Uh, and individuals, uh, circumstances, and uh, preferences, and their needs are different. But there are two, uh, two factors which are very important, and every one of us have to think about this issue. The first uh, factor is uh, shown in the uh, x-axis. Essentially, is the duration of your retirement period that you're planning for. So the start point is the point of the retirement. The end point is uh, death. Uh, so obviously, the longer a period of duration you are planning for, the more money you need to set aside before you can be retirement ready. The trouble is the end point of death. Every one of us knows that we will die someday, but we don't know uh, when that will happen. So that makes uh, retirement planning challenging. So later on, I'll share about the uh, CPF life and how that can help make this uh, planning a bit easier. The second factor is the standard of uh, living. How much money do you need a month in your retirement? And obviously, the more you need or the more you want, the bigger uh, lump sum you need before you can be ready for retirement. So conceptually, the, the, the rectangle you see, that the, represents the, the size of your money back that you need for retirement. The bigger the rectangle, the more money you need. Uh, but that's kind of conceptual. You need to get to the books and nuts, to a dollar figure. What's the figure? I'm not uh, speaking for CPF. I sell uh, some coyo for my employer. There's this uh, estimator in our webs in the CPF website. They can just just go in and just spend uh, 20, 30 seconds. That's all you need. Basically, answer that two question that uh, that posed earlier. What's the duration that you're planning for? How much you need? In a month during retirement, and voila, the escalator will give you an estimate, right? A number to start planning. I want to emphasize that this is very, very important. A lot of us are very interested in retirement planning, financial planning. We talk and talk at nauseum, but we never get down to the basics. And the first starting point is to have a figure in mind. So please, I urge you all to go and try this out. And just to put the number out so that you get to get it more specific, right? I suggest 
as a starting point. Think of the number 300. Now, I think quite a number of years ago, there was this uh, show called 300. Some gory show, lots of blood about Spartan and all that. Uh, think, think, think of that number, okay? If you don't remember anything uh, I, I say in this session, just remember the, the number 300. Now, what is it? What, what, how does this uh, 300 factor into this uh, uh, retirement equation? Every dollar, for every dollar you need a month in retirement, you need to set aside $300 okay, before you are retirement ready. Let me repeat. Huh? Every dollar you need every month for retirement, you need to have a lump sum of $300 at the start of your retirement. So if you say you need uh, $1,000 a month, it means you should be thinking of having $300,000 before you are retirement ready. Or if you say you need $2,000, $2, then we're talking about $600,000. Uh, so we can, uh, if there's interest, we can talk about the, the basis for this uh, this uh, 300 and so on uh, later during the Q&A. Okay, but that's just to uh, get you started to think about what is the number you need for retirement. Now, how does a CPF come into the picture? It's useful to think in terms of the your standard of living, how much you need, right? Break it up into, into two chunks. What I call the paycheck and the play check. Sorry, I'm still a bit old, old fashioned, still talking of checks. But the key word is the play and play, not the check. So the paycheck is the, the money you need to pay your bills. It's for the basic and the essential things in life. Whereas the play check is, as the name suggests, a, a check for you to play. Uh, uh, not, not so essential, but yeah, it's good and it's uh, fun and you want it. Uh, so the key thing is that um, for paycheck, because uh, it's for essentials, you want it to be funded from an asset which is uh, which is certain, so that you get your paycheck every month. It's the same amount every month; it doesn't change, right? So you can uh, you don't uh, run the risk that essential things like your utilities or this uh, get cut off. And this is uh, where the CPF uh, comes in, because the CPF fulfills those uh, uh, criteria. Those criteria is a uh, risk-free, it's guaranteed, and it's uh, stable. Okay, essentially, I have uh, three messages for, for you tonight. Uh, the first message is this, that saving for your paycheck is easy. Um, I think most of us, uh, when you think about uh, retirement planning, financial planning, you go, ah, headache, ah. So many things to think about, so many calculations, so many figures. Also, many so such a long term uh, issues, which is uh, undoubtedly true. Uh, but one aspect of it, right? The good news is that at least one aspect of it, saving for your retirement paycheck through the CPF is easy. It's easy because it is uh, automatic. You don't have to do anything at all. The only thing you need to do is to is to work, and then everything is uh, taken care of for you. When you work. Every month, your employer will take a chunk of your, your pay, add on another chunk from his own uh, money, send the money to the CPA board. When the CPA board receives the money, you will credit it to your CPA uh, accounts, and then you can use the money for various purposes, for uh, retirement, for your housing, healthcare, and, and so on. So the whole machinery runs in the background, and it's made very efficient, typical Singapore government style. Uh, in fact, it's uh, so easy that uh, so some people are actually quite clueless about, about CPF. So it's uh, good to, that you pay some attention uh, to your CPF and, and uh, how it works. Now, when you talk about uh, knowing the CPF, then on the other hand, most people immediately focus on the use of CPF, how I can withdraw as much uh, CPF as possible. That's the wrong focus because uh, you, you use as to your CPF, then you have nothing, nothing left in the CPF, then it doesn't allow your, the money to grow and to compound, right? So it's more important to think about how much you put in the CPF and how, how much the, and how fast the CPF is uh, growing. So you need to know about your CPF contribution. So the employer will pay 17% of your, of, the, of your salary as an employer's contribution and you will deduct 20% of your wages as your employee contribution. So your take home pay is uh, 80%. So you combine that 17% and 20%, making up uh, 37%, right? So that's your CPF contribution and send that amount to CPF board. 
So when the board will then uh, credit this money into three CPF accounts, which each CPF member would have. The ordinary account, which uh, most uh, people will use it for housing, the MediSafe account, which is primary for healthcare, and the special account, which is uh, sort of like pre-retirement -re pre or retirement needs. You should also know about the interest that the CPF pays. Now, most would know about the ordinary account that it pays 2.5% uh, per annum. The other two accounts, the special account and the retirement account, pays 4% uh, per annum currently. And over and above this 2.5% uh, and 4%, the government has uh, since uh, 2007, 2008, been giving uh, extra interest. The first uh, $60,000 of your combined balances in your CPF with up to 20,000 in the ordinary account, will earn one extra percent in uh, extra interest. So that means the extra $600 if you have that $60,000. And then uh, well, from uh, 2015, 2016, uh, for older people above 55, they get an extra 1% on the first uh, $30,000 of the CPF. So, so all in, the CPF interest is uh, between 2.5% to 6%. So then the question is, uh, what's the big deal about that is 2.5% or 4% or, or whatever? This is when I bring in uh, Albert Einstein, who taught us about this uh, concept of uh, compound interest as the eighth wonder of the world. It's simply another word for compound interest. It's uh, interest on interest. So the idea is uh, very simple. You have a sum of money, you don't touch it, you put it in something that, that earns interest. After one year, you, get, you still have a sum of money, you have uh, interest on it. After the, another year, you have the lump sum that you started off with, you have the first year interest, and you have the interest on the first year's interest. So you have interest on interest. And with each subsequent year you keep going, you get interest on interest on interest, and more and more interest. And uh, these are small incremental amounts which people don't pay attention, but it makes a lot of difference. This uh, concept of a uh, compound interest. Introduce another very well-known uh, uh, and very wealthy person, Warren Buffett. He shows you this uh, uh, effect of compound interest by his uh, net worth, which is the chart that you see. You can see that uh, it's an exponential shape. That's a, that shows uh, how powerful this uh, compound interest can become. So to, to have a very uh, good idea of what uh, is this, how, how, how is this uh, compounding work, uh, useful if you don't know yet to learn this uh, uh, simple rule called rule of standard two. So it gives you an idea of a, uh, how many years it takes for a sum of money earning a certain interest to double, okay? And the formula is simply the number 72. I think you don't need to know why 72. Just take it at face value. 72 divided by the interest that you can get on this uh, money. So I'll give you an example. So for example, I start with uh, $100,000. I have $100,000. I put it in something that earns 4% uh, per annum, okay? which is, for example, like the CPF uh, special account, which currently pays uh, 4% per annum. So if I apply this rule, I will take 72 divided by 4, and I'll get the answer 18. That means after 18 years, $100,000 earning 4% per annum becomes $200,000. Yes, the doubled. And if I have another 18 years, right, it will become... Not 300,000, no? I think most people in their mind think, think about this, uh, 300,000 linearly. No, it become uh, 400,000. It doubles again, doubles from uh, 200,000. So 100,000 after 36 years becomes uh, 400,000. Earning if it earns 4% uh, per annum. On the same basis, if uh, you start off with 100,000, but you leave it in a bank savings account, which pays uh, very little these days. So let's say it uh, pays a uh, 0.1%. You apply this uh, rule of 72 formula, you'll find that after 36 years, the 100,000 will grow to 104,000. It's a big difference from that 4% uh, scenario. On the other hand, if you can get uh, something that can earn you 8% per annum, you will see that your money has grown to 1.6 billion. Now, to earn 8.6, 8 8% per annum is beyond the CPF. 4% uh, maybe, right? So I'm, I'm just using this to illustrate uh, how this uh, rule of uh, 72 works. 
Okay, so that's the first point about uh, that. It's uh, easy to, to, to plan for your retirement paychecks through the CPF. The second point is a question to pose to you. How much do you want your retirement paycheck to be? Uh, and the subtext behind this uh, question is that actually there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of flexibility for you to be thinking about how, how you want to use the CPF to plan your paycheck. CPF is not, it's not uh, rigid, not so rigid as uh, a lot of people uh, they imagine it to be. I start with this uh, question, which uh, is uh, frequently asked. What happened to my CPF when I reached uh, 55 years old? Okay, so you have your ordinary account, your special account, you have a Medisafe account. Leave aside the Medisafe account. It's for healthcare purposes. It continues to be for healthcare purposes uh, after uh, before 55 and after 55. So focus on the ordinary account and the special account. So when you reach 55, you add up whatever balances there are in your ordinary and special account. Okay. And then you slice mentally in your mind, you slice uh, this amount that you have into three pieces. First piece, the bottom here, the bottom right, is the first 5,000. Uh, second piece, which I color coded green, is the, the amount that makes up this uh, full retirement sum, which for somebody turning 55 this year is uh, $181,000. If there's some excess of, after this uh, first two pieces, then it's in the top slice in blue. Okay, then at 55, um, CPM members will get a fourth and new account called the retirement account. Okay, and this retirement account is to house the green piece, the savings up to the full retirement sum. Okay, I'll show you with this click of mouse. So I will now address the green, pe green parts and then the blue parts. So the green part, okay, the money that goes into the retirement account. Essentially, it's the money that is meant for you in retirement from uh, 65 years on. And uh, this uh, money will go into this uh, CPF line, which I will talk on later. So it depends on how much you have in your uh, retirement account at 55. So if you have this uh, full retirement sum of uh, 181,000, you can expect to receive about uh, $1,500 per month and it's uh, for life from 65. Um, see, we allow people to voluntarily put more beyond the full retirement sum, right? Up to 50% more. That means uh, you will go up to $271,500. And this is called the enhanced retirement sum. If you have this amount at 55 in your retirement account, you can expect to get about 2200 ish per month from 65 for life. Conversely, if your balances is uh, not so high, it's a ninety thousand five hundred. Let's say then you expect about eight hundred dollars a month for life from age sixty five. Okay, so this is the to provide you with this a retirement paycheck for life. Now you may ask, now what if I want more out of the CPF? Um, how do I do it beyond beyond the whatever figures uh, in the last slide? So essentially, there are three ways. You reduce the CPF outflows, money that you use for various purposes, right, in the course of your, your life for housing, etc. So if you reduce it, then you have uh, more remaining in your balances. And if you have more, then you'll get more interest and ultimately it will contribute to you having a bigger retirement pay, paycheck. Or second way is you increase your inflows beyond what you mandatorily have to put in the CPA. There are some avenues for you to put in more so you can uh, do so. And finally, you can increase the effective uh, interest rate. You know, the ordinary account pays slightly lower interest rate compared to the other accounts. So on average, right, you have a certain effective interest rate. If you move some of the monies from the ordinary account to the other accounts, then to the special accounts, they say, then your overall uh, interest rate will be higher. So these are the two ways. So I will elaborate on each of the ways. Reduce your outflows. So if you are 55 already, now I just thought I talked about the green parts and the blue parts. So I look at the, the two blue parts now. Now this blue parts is a uh, money that you can uh, withdraw at will from 55. It means uh, once you reach 55, you can withdraw everything that is in the blue part. You can withdraw partially part of it and leave some part of it if you wish to. 
you can uh, withdraw at 55, you can withdraw after 55. There is no, no limit. So it is, a, it is a basically like a savings account. And it's a wonderful savings account, right? So if you, if you have a need for it, yeah, by all means, you can withdraw in full or in part. But if you don't have a need for it, or don't have a need for it yet, then I suggest you consider leaving it there. Leaving it there, earning the CPF interest, and when you have need, you can uh, withdraw it. Now, in, in general, every one of us uh, would, should, should have an emergency fund for emergency. And CPF is uh, not designed to be an emergency fund. But however, for a CPF member who is uh, from 55 years and older, I would uh, suggest that this blue part functions uh, excellently as an emergency fund. A key criteria of an emergency fund is that you need to have the able ability to take the money whenever you need it. So these the blue parts sitting in your special account and ordinary account uh, meets this criteria. In addition, right, it, uh, it is uh, giving you at least a uh, 2.5% interest, which is a uh, which I don't think you can get it anywhere la, or for any other emergency fund. The fact that they allow you to withdraw at, at will means that uh, you probably will get very little interest. So this, uh, the blue parts can act as a very good uh, emergency fund. If you don't use it as an emergency fund, you can think of it as a supplement to your CPF life, right? A CPF life pays a, a constant amount every month. Now your expenses uh, in retirement may or may not be the, the same. Some months will be more, some months will be less. So sometimes some, those months, which is uh, more than what the, you get from the CPF life, yeah, you can uh, tap onto the, the blue part, the money in your special audio account, and uh, withdraw a bit to make up the difference. So you can act as a supplementary CPF life, so to speak. Another way to reduce your outflow is uh, to consider using cash for your mortgage payment instead of using your ordinary account. Now, most people would, uh, uh, especially when they start off, get their first home, uh, rely on their ordinary account to fund their mortgage payment. And most, uh, for a lot of people, is uh, you use the ordinary account entirely for your mortgage payment, which is fine, right? Uh, usually, when you're young, uh, in the maybe 20s or 30s, just got married, right? Uh, getting a first uh, flat, cash is uh, tight and you need to depend on the CPF. So that's uh, perfectly fine. However, as you, um, as you, uh, in, your, your salary increases with uh, salary increments, or you get uh, promotion and so on, you may, you may, you may find that you have uh, some spare cash, right? Some cash in your uh, bank account, maybe more than what you need for your emergency fund. And so when that scenario come about, then you can consider using part of it to fund your mortgage payment. You can use uh, partly uh, your cash, part CPF for the mortgage payment. Or if you are in a more comfortable position later on, use uh, full, full, pay your mortgage payment fully from your cash, right? So of course, uh, the advantage is that uh, it's the opportunity cost. Your your opportunity cost for your ordinary account is 2.5%, while set for cash is uh, very, very low, right? So it's uh, in those situations, it may be better to use uh, cash and leave your ordinary account savings to grow interest. You can also consider right, using cash instead of ordinary account for investment. Um, you can use your uh, CPF, ordinary and special account for investment. But if you have uh, cash, you can consider using cash instead for the same reason that the opportunity cost is uh, higher in the, in the CPF. And uh, any investment that you want to make using CPF, you can make using cash. But the reverse is not true. Huh? Any investment you have to make using cash, you may not be able to make using CPF. So what you can use uh, CPF for investment is a subset of what you can use for cash. So these are some ways uh, that you can uh, reduce your outflows. Increasing your inflows or increasing your CPF effective interest rate. So there are a few ways to go about doing so. So first is uh, to put money into the special account for people who are below 55 or into the retirement account for people who are above 55, right? So either cash top up or you do a transfer from the ordinary account to your special retirement account. Uh, there's no minimum how much you can put in the extremist, a dollar also can, right? Uh, but there is a maximum, uh, there's a limit to how much you can put in. 
and the limit is the difference between the, the full retirement sum, 181,000, and the balance that you have in your special or retirement account. So this is called the uh, retirement sum uh, topping up scheme. And this scheme has uh, proven to be very popular with uh, CPA members over the years. So you see that uh, the growth is uh, very, very high. And in the recent years, it's uh, hovering around $2 billion per year. And this is a uh, voluntary savings on top of a uh, mandatory savings. So share, uh, this handsome man is uh, me, <laughs> share my three generation story. Uh, uh, with, with you. So when I first uh, started work, that's uh, almost uh, 30 years ago, I took on it as a sort of my failure responsibility to uh, give, a, give, give a, uh, an allowance to, to my parent, right, my father. And um, so I was uh, looking around for how to do it. And that's where I chanced upon this uh, CPF, this uh, retirement, uh, retirement sum topping up scheme. I wasn't in a CPF then, but I found that it's a, it's a very attractive Right. The money I put in, you know, my father's uh, retirement account um, gives me tax relief. So that's the first advantage. Then second, when the money is in, uh, in my father's uh, retirement account, it's earning interest rate, high interest rate, 4% per annum. That's good. And thirdly, it's uh, very convenient. Every, every month, without me having to do anything, the CPA board will automatically transfer the money to his uh, bank account. Then he can, uh, can use it wherever he likes. So that's, uh, uh, that's what I've been doing almost without fail every, every year, topping up my father's uh, retirement account. My father was, uh, runs a provision shop when, uh, uh, when younger, so he's a self-employed person and he doesn't have CPF. But uh, with my uh, contributions uh, over these years, he has been able to build up quite a nice uh, sum in his uh, retirement account. And now he has a joint CPF life and got the uh, a few hundred dollars a, a month uh, for, for as long as you live. So that's uh, my father's story. My story, right? Uh, so uh, I think um, quite a typical story when I uh, started working, uh, found my girlfriend, found my wife, got married and uh, uh, buy a flat, a HDB flat, and uh, I took up a HDB loan, uh, fully funded by my auditor account. And I find that after a few years, I actually have some uh, surplus in my auditor account. When my salary increased, I get promotion. I was able to build a buffer in my auditor account. So I was uh, thinking, what should I do with uh, this, this uh, money? I generally uh, risk adverse. So one thought in my mind then was uh, to use uh, this buffer to pay down my housing loan so that I can uh, save on the interest. Uh, so I went through and went through the thinking process and I said, hey, there are three, three options uh, before me. First option, I can uh, do nothing. Do nothing means uh, this buffer that I have continue to earn the uh, ordinary account interest rate, 2.5%. However, on the other hand, because I do not pay down the amount, uh, I'm paying 2.6% uh, on, uh, on my HDB loan. So net, net, I'm uh, minus 0.1% off, worse off. You know, we take the, the difference. That's the option one. Option two is, uh, yeah, I use this amount in my ordinary account, I pay down my housing loan. So with in this option, then I don't earn that 2.5% interest. But at the same time, I don't incur that 2.6% uh, HDB loan interest. So I'm better off, right? Compared to the first option, I'm better off marginally by 0.1%. But then there's a third option, uh, which is uh, more attractive, which is that I don't pay down my uh, housing loan. Instead, I transfer this amount to my... Uh, special account. Now, the special account pays uh, 4%. So by not paying down and by transferring, I gain 4%, I pay off, uh, my, I lose 2.6% uh, in the loan. Hey, voila, I have a, a, a net amount of 1.4% uh, in the interest. That's uh, like a, a free arbitrage. And the beauty of it is that they are all governed by formula, all packed to the ordinary account, high degree of stability. So very compelling. Uh, that, but that's only connectively. So in my mind, it's a, it's a very attractive proposition. But I find that uh, it was a very difficult act to do. I went to the CPI website, tried to, with the intent to transfer my ordinary account to a special account. But I find that I couldn't click that button to submit. 
uh, before I click, the CPF board warned me that this is a one-way transfer. You can transfer, but you cannot transfer back. So I start to think about, oh, what if uh, I have bid for this amount of money? What if I want to upgrade to a, a private property? What if I want to buy a second property and, and, and so on? So while it is a cognitively very attractive proposition, psychologically, it was a very difficult act to do. And I procrastinated on this uh, matter uh, uh, for a very long time until I discovered a little way to trick my mind, which uh, work that I share with you, but hopefully uh, it works for you also, and which is to transfer a small amount, right? an amount so small that even if I were to regret later on, it's okay, lah. It's, it's inconsequential because it's a, such a small amount. And with that trade of thought, I managed to do my first transfer from my ordinary account to my special account. And I find that actually the act of doing so helps, helps uh, psychologically. And I, after thinking a while, looking back, hey, it feels uh, good. And I was able to do more and more transfer. And before long, I was told, okay, I've reached my limit. I can't uh, transfer any anymore. I was uh, happy with that decision. It, uh, uh, it has uh, made me a lot of uh, extra interest uh, over, the, over the years. So I now have a healthy balance in my, in my CPF. Um, the third generation, my children, so I believe in uh, uh, financial literacy and try to teach uh, uh, my children uh, from young. So those days, uh, the CPF uh, has this another calculator, which is essentially is about the rule of 72, show people uh, how your CPF balances grow with certain interest. So it may seem uh, something simple to us adults, but for the children, for kids, Wow, it's a wonderful, you know, to them. It's like, hey, money can grow after you show them the steps. Oh, $1 after earning 4% per annum become $2 after 18 years. Wow, it's a wonderful. And I caught, caught, caught their imagination. And then to make it experiential, right? I put a small amount of money into the CPF and every year show them how they have grown. And uh, they're very happy about it. And I believe I had uh, sown the seeds of uh, financial literacy in, in them. My two uh, boys, they are grown up now in the 20s. I see that uh, they are prudent with the money, they are uh, earning money, they are investing wisely. And uh, it's one of my uh, quiet satisfaction as my father, that uh, as a father, they have uh, imparted this uh, value to them. Okay, so that's my story. Hopefully, it's uh, uh, interesting and encouraging to some of you Ah, So, talking about kids, so this uh, article come out in the Business Times. Uh, a few years ago, ago this uh, journalist uh, calculated that, oh, if the day that your child is born, you put this uh, full retirement sum into the child's uh, special account, which by the way is allowed, you know, some, a lot of people didn't know. Then by, just by allowing that, that money to compound, he, he calculated that uh, that amount over 55 years will grow to something like 1.5 million. And this is uh, before taking into account any working contribution. That the child makes so this uh, article attracted a lot of interest and a lot of uh, uh, parents are very interested you know hands forth to want to put the uh, money into their children's uh, special account which you can it's uh, no different from uh, how you do it for adults okay so besides uh, putting in for retirement purposes you can put in to other accounts there's every year you can put in a total of a uh, thirty seven thousand seven hundred forty dollars into your CPF. This accrued the RSTU, the retirement sum topping up scheme that I talked about. Okay, how did this uh, thirty-seven thousand seven hundred forty comes about? Right, remember, the, remember you have a co working contribution uh, from your employment. There's a salary ceiling of a uh, six thousand dollars. Means the first six thousand dollars of your salary attracts uh, CPF. Salary above six thousand does not attract CPF. And then we give up to seventeen years, seventeen months. Sorry. 17 months in a year for your salary to attract a CPF. So <clears throat> that means uh, for somebody whose uh, salary is uh, above uh, $6,000 and you have more than 17 months of the salary in a year, including bonuses of this, you, and then you multiply by the CPF contribution rate of uh, 37%, it means you will have uh, $37,740 from uh, working contribution into your CPF. However, if your salary is uh, low, below 6,000, or you don't have the 17 months of uh, salary, 
your working contribution will be less than $37,740. That's then so you have a gap and you can uh, voluntarily put in CPF to up to this gap, right? You can put in into the three accounts or you can put in just to the maybe safe account. So this is a another option for you, a voluntary contribution to the CPF. Okay, finally, you have a you can have a housing refunds. Um, most people will know that uh, when you use the CPF for housing and then you subsequently uh, sell your, your property, you have to put back into the CPF what you have taken out plus accrued interest. And accrued interest is the interest that you have earned had you not uh, withdrawn those uh, monies for housing in the first place. But not many uh, realize that actually you don't need to sell your uh, property to put back whatever you have uh, taken out plus interest. You can do so. And that's called a housing refund. And you can do so anytime. So the benefit of uh, doing so is that uh, whatever you put back, you then earn the CPF interest, your audit account interest. And subsequently, should you sell your property, then what you need to refund is a smaller amount because you have already, in a sense, uh, uh, partially paid back earlier. Okay, so these are the few ways uh, that you can put more in the CPF beyond what is uh, mandatory. Now I go to the last uh, message, which is about the CPF life. I call it a checkbook that never stops paying because it pays for life. Okay, so um, how CPF life is an annuity. An annuity is a big word. Most people understand uh, life insurance. In life insurance, you pay a small premium, right? Then uh, should the unexpected happen, which is typically means a death or permanent disability, then your beneficiary get a big lump sum. Uh, think of CPF life or think of an annuity as a as a reverse of a life insurance. You put in the amount of money into this uh, annuity, uh, then you get a sum of money every month while you're alive. And then when death happens, the money stops. So it just it works on the same uh, insurance actuarial principles as a life insurance, just the reverse way. So this uh, is a very helpful because uh, we don't know when we'll pass away. So what if you're in an annuity plan, then you don't have to worry about it. As long as you're alive, you get the uh, income. So it takes away this uh, longevity risk. In CPF life, there are three, three plans. The standard plan, the basic plan, and the escalating plan. So you choose uh, one which uh, meets your needs. So between the standard plan and the basic plan, the standard plan will pay a higher amount, higher money sum, right? For the same amount of money, the starting amount they have in the, in the retirement account, the standard plan pays a higher uh, monthly payment. However, um, the bequest, which is what your beneficiary get on that, will be lower. And so the basic plan will work the other way around. And both are what we call level plans, means the uh, amount you get every month is uh, more or less the same. Uh, recent years, we introduced another plan called the escalating plan. Compared to these two level plans, the difference is that the escalating plan will start lower, right? But every year, the payment will increase by 2%. So the escalating plan is uh, useful for somebody who is uh, concerned about inflation, right? My coffee costs uh, $1.60 this year. Next year, it may cost $1.70, so I need more. So if uh, that's your consideration, then uh, you want more uh, monthly payments in future years. So the escalating plan may be suitable for you. Of course, uh, you have to live with a, a lower payout initially. Another way to uh, um, options uh, and flexibility for, for you is uh, to defer your payout. You can start the CPF life payout uh, at 65. However, if there's uh, no need for you to do so, maybe because you're still working, uh, maybe because uh, you have uh, other sources of income in the banks and so on, you don't want to start, you can uh, defer payout. You can defer by up to five years, right? From between 65 to 70, then you can, then can uh, decide when you have to start the payout. So the advantage of doing so is that for each year that you defer, right, when, when you start your payout, you get higher higher pay, payment, up to 7% more. So these are the options you have. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of my presentation. Three, leave with you the three messages. One, the saving for your paycheck through the CPF is easy. Two, determine how much you want your paycheck to be and make use of the various uh, avenues in the CPF to do so. And thirdly, know that in CPF life, you have a checkbook that never stops paying. Okay, with that, I thank you. I look forward to uh, uh, 
kind of a question answer with you. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Mr. So, for your wonderful sharing. All in one hour, I think you have given very uh, insightful keys to how to maximize the CPF. Now, for those of you who are watching us or inside the webinar room, there's almost 200 of you. Uh, you can start typing in your questions into the chat box. Now, somewhere on your screen, you should see a chat box and you can start typing in the questions there. And Mr. So will answer them in due time. And we have over 200 of you watching on YouTube. So you can't ask questions there. You might want to join us inside the webinar room. We have about space for another 10. Uh, you, if you have questions and you're watching on YouTube Live, please come inside the webinar room to type in your questions and Mr. So will answer them. And while we're waiting for questions to stream in, uh, do join the 1M65 Telegram group chat by searching for Lu L O O 1M65 in Telegram. Telegram is an app that you can download on your smartphone. Okay, so look for Lu 1M65. There's over 3,000 of us inside there. And the main topic is how to make more money and create wealth using CPF. Okay, so also at the same time, uh, please also join the OTCS Telegram channel by searching for Online Traders Club in the Telegram and join us there so that you can be kept posted of more interesting webinars and seminars and workshops that are coming up. Or you can also subscribe to our mailing list at our website at onlinetradersclub.org. Now I'm seeing that there's about oh, 20 to 30 questions already. So let us dive into some of the questions and see. So Richard, one. can I inter in, uh, interject here? I just want to say that anybody who has uh, got other questions that uh, on YouTube, uh, you can also join our Telegram group and type your questions there. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is that uh, I can put the questions to uh, Jining, uh on the uh, on the chat uh, in this uh, in this uh, webinar. Ah, okay, good idea. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Lu. Okay, let me see uh, what other questions here. Okay, Cal was asking, what is the max for RSTU? Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, if you are below fifty five. The maximum is the FRS, the full retirement sum. So that's uh, $181,000. The amount you can put in is the difference between this uh, FRS and uh, the balance that you have in your special account. I'm assuming you, you don't invest your uh, special account in other in investment, uh, which is uh, not a good idea, right? So let's, let's say you have uh, $100,000 in uh, your special account. then. The maximum you can put in voluntarily through this uh, RSTU then is uh, $81,000. 181 minus uh, 100,000. Uh, for those who are older, uh, above 85, you can put in more. You can put in 50% uh, more. So it's uh, 1.5 times the FRS. So that's the 271,500, I think, right? So you can uh, put, put, you have uh, more to put in. Thank you, Mr. So. Okay, I do see questions coming in Telegram group. Um, I will ask from there as well, okay? So if you are watching on YouTube and you have questions, uh, please feel free to type inside the Telegram group, 1M65. And I already see some other members helping out to answer the question already. Thank you so much. Okay, let me move on to the next question. What is the, Sen is asking, what is the retirement sum maximum top up into special account again? Yeah, it's uh, for people who are below 55, then it's this uh, 181 less the balance that you, you have in your special account. And I should also add that uh, if you do uh, cash top ups up to the full retirement sum, you can get the uh, tax relief. Ah, okay. Thank you, Mrs. So. Okay, Lionel is asking how much percentage of my CPF OA account can I use to buy a private property? I don't know whether that's relevant, but do you know the answer? It's, it's okay. Uh, so there are, um, of course, the um, um, in the first place, uh, some prudential rules that the uh, monetary authority of the Singapore has put in, right? So, for instance, uh, uh, the loan limit typically is a maximum uh, seventy-five percent now, 
Uh, so then uh, of the balance 25%, which is uh, for your down payment, um, I think uh, minimally 5% has to be in, uh, cash and the rest, uh, the rest you can use a CPF. Then uh, you, for your monthly mortgage payment, you can uh, use a CPF for your for, to, to pay the mortgage payment. Now over the entire uh, life of your, your property or property purchase or loan, there's also a limit, right? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's 120% of the uh, purchase value of the property. Lah. So if your property value is, let's say, a million dollars, the total CPF that you, you can use is uh, 1.2 million, right? Total means uh, the uh, what your CPF you use to, for the down payment as well as all the uh, monthly mortgage payments. Ah, okay, thank you. And uh, let me see. Jin is asking, why do you say at 55 after setting aside the FRS or ERS to keep the money in CPF? Would it make sense to withdraw and invest elsewhere for higher returns? So I'm, uh, if you look back to my uh, uh, charts, I'm referring to the blue parts, right? So of, of course, uh, uh, you can uh, withdraw to invest if you wish to. Each person's uh, circumstances is different. Also depends on when the, whether you're able to uh, make a, a higher returns with your investments. Uh, but I'm just uh, saying that uh, if you compare in, in compare instruments with a uh, comparable risk, right? So in this case, uh, it's, uh, you should be comparing with something which is a uh, safe, guaranteed, risk-free, something like the, what the fixed deposit of banks and the, the CPF interest rate is higher. And you have this advantage of uh, being able to withdraw anytime you wish to. The, the, blue, the blue parts, the money that is in the special account or the ordinary account. So there are a lot of advantages to do so, especially for people who are less uh, risk, uh, risk uh, taking. Ah. Okay, thank you, Mr. So. Okay, Lindsay was just uh, giving a compliment to Mr. So as she thinks that part of school's education should include CPF knowledge. Every Singaporean should know this. Well, Lindsay, you'll be glad to know that this video is archived on YouTube, so it will surely benefit many generations to come. Thanks to Mr. Lu as well as Mr. So for sharing. Okay, moving on. The next question is by JY and his or her question is, what advice would you give to someone who is working overseas and currently have no contribution to their CPF? Would the advice defer for short-term and long-term overseas working commitments? Oh, um, difficult to give a general advice. So of course, it depends on the, the, the circumstances of the person, the preference and so, so on. But uh, generally, if, uh, if uh, the intention is uh, for the person to return in Singapore sometime future a long term stay then uh, and there are plans uh, for to buy a property to retire in Singapore then it's uh, useful to consider uh, making use of some of the schemes available which are shared put in the CPF put voluntary contribution put into their retirement uh, special accounts and, and so on mm, okay thank you and the next question is from Colin. Uh, Colin is asking, can we keep money in OA without transferring to RA upon reaching 55 years old? Um, short answer is uh, no. So uh, I think this is quite a common question. Let me elaborate. So I go back to that, that, that chart where I show the green and blue part. I say that uh, uh, for the green part, we'll, put, we'll try to put the full retirement sum, 181,000 into the retirement account. And that comes from the special account and the ordinary account. It will come from the special account first. That means we'll look at the special account, see how much you have, and then you'll transfer it to the, to the retirement account. If uh, your special account already has uh, in excess of 181,000, that means we'll take the full 181,000, uh, and that's it. And uh, uh, there's no money will be transferred from the ordinary account. However, if uh, your special account has uh, less than 100,000, so let's say your special account is a hundred thousand. We will take the hundred thousand and put it into the retirement account. Then is there still that balance of eighty one thousand? We'll try and look. Then we'll look at your ordinary account. And if your ordinary account has a eighty one thousand, 
then we'll transfer this $81,000 into the retirement account and to make up the $181,000. And so related to this, uh, going beyond the question they asked, one of the very uh, common uh, questions that's asked, especially like now I see in the, the 1M65 uh, Telegram group, is this, this, thing, this thing called the uh, RSA shielding. Somebody came up with this uh, term. Uh, essentially, uh, the idea is, uh, well, because uh, the CPA board takes the money from the special account first, and the special account earns a higher interest rate than the audio account, 4% compared to 2.5%. So people is uh, people now see the special account is very good and uh, would rather, actually, it's their, the their way compared to your question. They would rather the money comes from the audio account to go to the retirement account than the way to come from the special account. So somebody come up with this uh, concept called the SA shielding, which essentially works like that. Um, Shortly before the person turns 55, you take out the, the, the money in your special account for investment. Invest it in something that is safe, low risk, you won't, you, high chance of that you won't lose your, your capital, right? Um, the rules allow you to take out monies in excess of uh, $40,000 in your special account, right? So if you have $100,000 in your special account, you can withdraw uh, $60,000. You're left with $40,000 in special account. So when it turns 50, 55, we will take 40,000 in a special account because that's what's left and put it into the uh, retirement account and then take the balance from the ordinary account. And then thereafter, then uh, as this, uh, this uh, CPA hack goes, uh, you sell the investment and you put back the $60,000 into the special account. So you have uh, 180,000 in the retirement account earning 4% at least and you still have uh, 60,000 into the special account earning 4%. So I thought I'll share this uh, uh, essay shooting uh, with this group because it's uh, attracting quite a lot of attention. Wow, thanks for the tip. So that's SA shooting for you. Okay, next move on. Um, Gigi is asking, why does the CPF basic plan payout decreases from age 85 onwards but stays the same flat for the standard plan oh okay good question um it's uh not exactly uh 85 uh the chart is just uh, shown for illustrative uh, purposes it's um is cpf uh products uh, uh changes over time it evolves the s the basic plan in a sense is a, a earlier generation plan uh, when, uh, when the CPF life started in um, 2009, actually the initial stage, uh, there was uh, 12 plans that was uh, proposed. Uh, then uh, the feedback was uh, still confusing. Uh, then eventually uh, for the implementation, uh, four CPF life plans were introduced and the basic plan is uh, one of them. Uh, but then even with just uh, four plans, uh, people say it's uh, still confusing, they can't choose. So eventually uh, it got reduced to two. The basic plan was retained, uh, then we're, uh, the standard plan was introduced. Uh, then, now when we have two, then people say, ah, two, two choice only, not enough. <laughs> they want uh, more, more variation. So eventually we added the escalating plan. So now we are left with, uh, now we have uh, three plans. So this is the, the historical development. And in the first uh, generation plans, like the basic plan, um, is to, that, to the question asked, it's a, it's a factor, it's a, it's a design of how the uh, extra interest is uh, being used in the CPF life. Um, so the plan is designed to be level. Um, in the basic plan, the extra interest, if you have, uh, if you have the $60,000, you know, up to $60,000, you earn the extra interest, right? Um, the extra interest is not annuitized. That means it doesn't go into the the CPF life pool. It goes into your retirement account. Okay. And then it's a payout. Uh, so, of course, um, over time, as um, money is paid to you every month, um, your capital reduces. And at a late stage, it will, your balance will reduce to below 60,000. When, when it goes below 60,000, then of course you don't earn the full extra interest. So, what you get will be become a, what you get every month will become a, 
lesser and lesser, which is why your payouts will start, will start to drop slightly. So that's the that's the that explain why why the payout is not exactly a level for the basic plan. Then when we introduce the, the standard plan, um, yeah, we recognize that there's this uh, in a sense quilt about cooks about it like, So which is uh, not really ideal. So what we do for the what the board does for the standard plan is to annuitize the uh, extra interest. That means uh, it, it goes into the CPF life pool, and then the extra interest is also paid out for life, which is why for the standard plan it is a level. Right. Thank you for your explanation, Mr. So. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, it's by Alex, and his question is: Can we put cash into CPF SA after age fifty-five? Okay, so after fifty-five, you can put cash, but it goes into the uh, retirement account, not the special account. Okay, special account put, putting into cash or transferring an ordinary account is for below fifty-five. So it's a strict delineation. Below fifty-five, think of special account. After 55, think of the retirement account. Okay, thank you, Mr. So. Okay, next question is from John. I think it's also related to the question that Alex asked. And he's asking, can I top up cash or transfer OA to his FRS after 55? You can uh, transfer to the retirement account up to the ERS, which is currently $271,500. Okay, thank you. And Cal is asking, I'm not yet 55. Where should I top up to the max where should I top up to maximize the interest from all these accounts in the CPF? Uh, so you can uh, so it's a few ways I explained earlier. You can uh, top up to the special account. You can uh, put it into the three accounts, the voluntary contribution if uh, you have the, that that's that buffer or you can put it into the Medisave account. Or if you have a, a property and you use CPF, you can do a housing refund. Uh, which, which, of, which of the various methods to use then depends on the, the objective. If you are planning for retirement, you want more for retirement, then the special account is the way to go. If you're, you're concerned about the healthcare, you want, you want, uh, you want to eat to, for hospitalization, for, for your hospitalization, uh, insurance plans, then you can uh, put into the medicine or you want to just spread it over over to the three accounts, then you can uh, do so. On, on the other hand, if you're thinking of a uh, um, for property, maybe upgrade or so, then you can do a housing refund so that the money goes to the ordinary account and can be used for your next uh, property purchase. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. So. Okay, the next question comes from Okay, let me see. Okay, there are wow, so many questions. Let me pick the next one. Huh? Ah, okay. This question comes from ET. Can I direct cash contribution to special account alone and not have it split into OA, SA, and MA? Yes, you can. Yeah, so that's the uh, retirement sum topping up scheme. It will go just into the special account. So the retirement sum topping up scheme is a separate scheme from the voluntary contribution. The voluntary contribution, you have two options. Right? One option to three accounts or the second option just to the MediSafe account. So the answer to the question is yes, you can just uh, put in directly into the special account. Okay, thank you. And the next question is from Bruce. Bruce is asking, where in the CPA website can I find out how much I have used for my housing payments? Or do I have to physically go down to CPF to find out? Oh, no, no, no. Don't, 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 don't come to the CPA service center. Anyway, it's now closed because of COVID-19. Uh, no, so the information is available. You log into the CPA website, your CPF accounts using uh, uh, SingPass 2FA, then um, you will see your CPF balances, and uh, there are some, uh, there are a few statements. You look at the left uh, banner, you look for housing statement. You choose a housing statement, then you will find, you will, you will, you will tell you how much uh, CPF that you have used for this property, and how much is the accrued interest uh, 
for this uh, property, right? So the uh, maximum amount that you can do for housing ref refund is the sum of these two amount, these two figures, the amount that you have already used plus the accrued interest. So it's available available in website. Right, thank you. Okay, so uh, just log into the CPA website and the information you're looking for is right there. And Ravindran is asking whether there'll be the recorded video of this. The answer is yes, it is on YouTube. And then we will also be uh, sending the replay link to all those who have registered. Now, moving on to the next question. Let me let me pick a question from the Telegram group. Huh? Okay, wow, there's quite a lot here as well. See. Okay, some of them have been answered. Will okay, Paul Xiong was asking, will CPF look into possibility of tax rebates when topping up children's CPF? Huh, this is a policy question. I suppose uh, anything is uh, possible. Uh, both at, at the moment, um, it's, it's not on the cards. Huh? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Let me see. Jonathan Goh is asking whether there's any limit in using CPF for monthly loan repayment. I would believe it's housing loan, right? Um, for the monthly payment itself, uh, there reason, but uh, for the life of the loan, that means from the time you get the loan and start using the CPF, there's a, there's a total uh, CPF that you can use. It's a bit complicated depending depending on the property that you buy depending on the loan that you take uh generally generally is this a 120 percent I, I mentioned earlier the total amount of cpf that you can uh, use whether for down payment or money mortgage cannot exceed 120 percent of the property price or the valuation whichever is a lower right okay thank you and uh, starcraft is asking uh is there a theoretical limit for FRS? Is it possible to reach it, uh, reach one million in X number of years? <laughs> I suppose uh, the, the question behind the question is uh, why does the FRS uh, keep increasing? Uh, the simple answer is uh, because of uh, inflation, right? Things uh, become uh, more expensive, so uh, future generation of retirees will need more money compared to. Earlier generation, like you think of your parents, uh, uh, the time they retire, they probably don't need the, the kind of money that we, that we need. So, uh, I would take it as a as a fact of life that the, the amount will keep increasing. It's just a question about how much you increase. <laughs> okay, that's a very candid answer. Uh, hard truths, hard truths. Okay, Gabriel is asking. Assuming I have enough ERS. What's the, what's the disadvantages of putting just BRS and pledging your properties beside lower CPF life payout? Um, okay, before I answer that question, talk about this uh, pledging first, uh, which uh, I didn't touch on. So pledging is um, uh, what you can do if you want to withdraw cash from your retirement account, right? So, so it's one of those uh, flexibility. So let's say at 55, you have, you know, you have the FRS in your retirement account. You have $181,000. You're 55 year old. Oh, this year you have that money in your ordinary special account. So we transfer $181, $181,000 into your retirement account. So you have the full retirement sum. However, uh, you, you also have a uh, use your CPF for housing in your earlier years, right? So what we allow you is to do a pledge. By doing a pledge, right? So it means uh, you can uh, withdraw up to half of this uh, full retirement sum. If you have used uh, the 80,000 for housing before, you can do this pledge. And when you do this pledge, it means uh, you, you, take, you take out $81,000 from, uh, from your retirement account as cash, okay? So your retirement account dropped to half of the FRS to the basic retirement sum. So this is uh, what pledging means. Subsequently, should you sell your property, you have to put back the amount that you will withdrawn, the pledge amount. Then you go back to a higher amount. Uh, so what's the advantage of uh, doing so? 
Uh, the advantage is then you have a uh, cash at hand. If you have the need for the cash, or you believe uh, you can uh, generate better returns compared to what the retirement account or CPF life give you, then uh, then it's uh, better, right? Um, then, but then on the other hand, then of course you got a lower balance in your retirement account after you have a pledge. It means your payout is uh, lower, so your your retirement paycheck become a, a small amount. So it, it depends on uh, what 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 is your needs and preferences and uh, which camp are you are you in uh, right? uh, If you if you belong to the anti CPF camp, you want to withdraw as much as, much as possible. Then you would, uh, choose to use to pledge and uh, take out the, the money. If you believe in CPF. On the other hand, you want to put as much as possible in and uh, get a bigger retirement paycheck. Thanks for that answer. Okay, I hope that that answered uh, you, Gabriel. And uh, Gabriel also asked, uh, can he sell his property and replace, uh, repledge another property after 55? Yeah, you can. Okay, that's great. Okay, let's move on. Huh? Okay, let me see. Okay, Chong Hui is asking for HDB lease buyback. The money hmm. goes into RA. What happens if the person's age is above 90? Understand that uh, this person above 90 can't join CPF Life. So is it on RSS? If so, what is the monthly payout? Okay, uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, quite a technical issue. First, uh, the lease buyback is a HDB scheme, uh, so it's administered by CPA, uh, HDB, not not CPF board. Essentially, the idea is that you have a, a running, you have a remaining lease on your property on the HDB flat. And if you buy direct from a HDB when it's new, it's a 99 year lease. After you have lived with it for a while, of course, you get a, a shorter lease. And by and large, uh, the 99 year lease would would um, would be more than what uh, most of us will, will need. Typ typically, a uh, uh, person buy a HDB flat, no, say uh, 20s or 30s. So with 90 years, that means you, you can live up to 120, 130 years, you, you, you still can have it, the same HDB flat. And, uh, most of us uh, won't live that, that long. So that's the opportunity, like should, should uh, cash be tight, you want to uh, generate some uh, money from the HDB, you sell part of the HDB, your remaining lease to HDB in exchange for cash, right? So that's the, the essence of the lease buyback. Um, with the lease buyback, then uh, you there's a grant that the HDB gives, so like a, a bonus and that's in cash. Uh, the, then some part of it, the, the money released from the lease, so goes into the CPF, into the retirement account, go to the CPF life. Uh, so, but this question is a very specific one for somebody who is uh, quite old, more than 90 years, because uh, you can join CPF life up to age 80. So if a person is already past 80 years old, then you cannot join CPF life. Uh, then the money will go into the retirement account. And yes, the uh, uh, person is correct. It will be under the retirement sum scheme. Basically, if it's not under CPF life, the money is uh, given out every month or until there's uh, no more money. I will not be able to tell you what is the payment. Uh, it depends on how much goes into the retirement account, and then uh, you'll be you'll be streamed out. Right. Thank you, Mr. So, for the comprehensive answer. Okay, let me move on. Okay, coming back to the questions inside the webinar room. Let's see. Okay, this uh, Richard, another Richard, not me, is saying that. Mm -hmm. uh, Reaching 55 age next year, if he wants to enhance uh, minimum sum, if I want to enhance minimum sum at 279k, would the CPF lock this full amount to my RA and cannot touch it till 65 payout? Yeah, so if you, try, if you, you want to have this uh, enhanced retirement sum, uh, you transfer from your audio account, a special account to it, or you put cash, then 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 it remains in the, uh, in the retirement account. Uh, and then it will grow interest, and then uh, from uh, 65, you can uh, withdraw it as a, as a monthly payout. 
So in that sense, I suppose it's what you what you mean by locked. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. Saw two questions inside the Telegram. Uh, Joy is asking, any advice for people after sixty-five? Wow, that's a very general general question. I don't know advice in terms of what. Um, if 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 you are still healthy, you may want to continue working. Uh, if you like your job, then there's no reason to retire. By all means, if you think it's a uh, time to enjoy the fruits of your labor, you have uh, money, you have to start your payout, then you you, you can do so. Uh, you can do part time. You know, it's a uh, it really depends on uh, what's uh, what's important to you. Uh, Various uh, CPF uh, schemes are there uh, available for you to, to use it. So specifically, uh, you should the uh, CPF question you should be thinking about is: uh, Do you have to start your payout uh, if you your CPF life or the retirement sum payout? Uh, you can you you have that five years from between uh, sixty five to seventy to make the decision. If you don't make the decision, automatically by uh, seven at seventy, the uh, CPF board will start the payout for you. So um, then, uh, yeah, so then it's a question of uh, whether you start payout or you defer the payout, or if you still have uh, some spare cash you want to top up so that when you start the payout, you get a high payout. So these are the few uh, considerations. Ge generally, you will be a uh, you'll be a prudent thing not to have a uh, uh, housing commitments at, at that age. Most of the housing housing loan. Uh, don't give up by banks, they'll stop at uh, 65. If there's some exceptional cases and uh, they allow the payment to, to extend beyond 65, and only if you're one of those, in, and if there's uh, some spare cash around, you can know, consider paying down your housing loan. It's, uh, um, as one gets older, generally one should be more uh, risk adverse and uh, not take up uh, too much uh, investment risk, not take up uh, too much uh, uh, housing liabilities. I suppose uh, that's some of the general things that I would say. Then um, health will be increasingly uh, important. So uh, have a look at uh, your MediSafe, right? Hopefully you have a nice balance in your MediSafe, which can be used for hospitalization expenses and for certain outpatient uh, treatment. Um, the hospitalization uh, insurance plan is important. Uh, consider carefully uh, which plan you, you are in by 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 law every singaporean is uh, has hospitalization uh, benefits uh, sorry hospitalization insurance that's called the medishield life however medishield life is uh, designed to cater for uh, hospital stays in class b2 or c class ward and when you say in the class b2 or c class ward you cannot dictate the choice of a surgeon so if you are okay with it you know you have to think if, if should you get a if you need hospitalization are you okay with a b2 or c are you okay not to have to not to be able to choose your surgeon if if, if uh, your answer to both is yes then uh, the medical life is uh, all you need however if your answer is no you want uh, i don't know a b club b1 ward or you want a private hospital or you want to be able to choose your surgeon then uh, medical life may not be sufficient and you got you should consider an integrated shield plan an integrated shield plan is offered by the uh, private insurance company. Uh, so you choose according to the, the, the plan type, the work class that you want to stay. And of course, compared to MediShield Life, the premiums uh, will be much higher because the benefit is uh, uh, much greater. So these are a few areas I can think of uh, that you should consider for somebody who is uh, a bit older, above 65. Right. Thank you, Mr. So. Okay, coming back to the telegram, uh, coming back to the webinar chat, Colin is asking, which CPF life would you advise with regards to better net returns? This regarding bequests. <laughs> it's a very uh, difficult uh, issue. It's is an actual issue. Um, CPF life is uh, calculated to be actually fair. So in a sense, it doesn't matter which uh, plan you choose. Um, before I um, go further into this, I uh, sort of talk a bit more about CPF life uh, to provide the fuller context. So just now I talked about the, uh, the basically the, the payouts, how the various plans differ. The other aspect of it is that uh, 
CPF life is designed to be sort of like the um, capital guarantee. It means uh, you don't lose your capital. You will get back your capital in full, either through the money payouts or through a uh, bequest. Um, bequest is uh, whatever is left over that has not been dealt to you, right? Upon death, it will go to your beneficiary. So whichever plan you choose, uh, they're all capital guaranteed, you will get back the, the capital, right? Um, so then which one works best? Um, the key, the salient points is, uh, is like that, lah, right? CPF life is an annuity. So an, an annuity will benefit people who live longer. The longer you live, the more you get out of the CPF life, whichever plan it is, right? So you live to a right old age, 120 years old, CPF life will still pay you every month this, this amount of money. So of course, you will get more compared to somebody who uh, say live a shorter, shorter life. Now, then between the, the three plans, how do you calculate next? The, the, key, the key factor, the, which one will make more sense to you is the question of uh, how long you, you live, uh, which uh, is uh, very hard to calculate, very hard to predict, right? But you think in terms of the, in a sense, uh, the degree of annuitization, uh, right? Uh, between the standard plan and the, base, and the basic plan, the basic plan has a less, is a smaller degree of annuitization compared to the standard plan. The standard plan, the full amount is, uh, is annuitized. Whatever you have in your retirement account when you start your CPF life, it goes into the annuity pool and it's in the shed. The basic plan, only a small amount is uh, annuitized. It's uh, roughly about 10% for, for guys, for males, 13% uh, for females. That amount is annuitized. The annuity starts from uh, age 90. The remaining amount is uh, streamed out from when you start 65 to 70 to, to 90. So it's a question of, uh, is it, of do, you, do you want to share, do you like to share your money, right? So a lot of people, the instinctive answer is no, I don't like to share the money. So if you don't like to share the money, uh, then, uh, then uh, you should choose a basic plan. If you don't mind sharing the money, then uh, go for the standard plan. But mind you, sharing your money can work both ways. You can benefit more, you can benefit less. So uh, you can uh, do our calculation as you want, but it's, uh, it's, uh, you, you don't have a specific answer to, to uh, this, this question. Right. Thank you, Mr. So. I hope that answers the question, Colin. Okay, next question is from Josephine, and she's asking, is it advisable to use the CPF to buy REITs as the dividend yield is around 5 to 6%? It's a general um, investment question, whether it's a REIT or, or stocks or unit trust or, or exchange traded fund or, or, or whatever. So if uh, you believe that you can uh, take the, the investment risk, you believe that you can uh, do better than the CPF uh, interest rate, you add the uh, interest to when uh, read up and understand all these investments, you have the you have the competence, you have the ability to do the investment, you have the time to read all the annual reports, uh, track all the stocks, then go ahead. Um, if not, then if you are more, if you, if you prefer something stable, safer, then you leave, leave it to CPF. So it's a it's an individual choice. But generally, I think um, a lot of the uh, financial planners uh, and uh, investment uh, experts would, would uh, I would say, would advise against uh, investing your special account. Um, the special account is uh, pays a, a relatively attractive uh, CPF interest rate, four to six percent. It's uh, guaranteed. You know, very few uh, products of a similar risk nature can can beat the special account. So a lot of people would uh, advise against uh, investing in a special account. And certainly, I would invest by my special account, except maybe the the SA shielding at around fifty five. The ordinary account, then, yeah, it depends. Uh, for a younger age, if you are relatively young, uh, then it's a question of uh, do you need your ordinary account funds for housing? That's what a lot of uh, people at that stage uh, use the ordinary account funds for. If you already settled your ordinary account, your housing and you still you're still young, you still you still have a lot, relatively long runway, then you may want to consider investing your ordinary account. 
However, if you are a bit older, closer to uh, 55, then I would say the, the proposition changed a bit, a bit somewhat. No? You, if you are somebody who has uh, quite a bit in your, in your CPF already, no? you can uh, have a full retirement sum. Then let's say you're a few years from uh, 55, like I am now, right? Uh, the way I see it, I will, I will see the money in my ordinary account sort of like, sort of like a, a fixed deposit. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm uh, 53 years old. So our money in my any ordinary account, I'll see like a, a two two years uh, fixed deposit, because because I know that uh, I will have my full retirement sum already. This amount of money that I have in my ordinary account, I can withdraw at 55. So it's a uh, it's really, I will compare to a full two year FD, then I will compare uh, what rate I can get from a two year FD uh, out there in the the, the banks now. And I don't think any of them can offer 2.5%. So to me, uh, the audit account is a very attractive uh, and superior FT compared to what the banks can offer. So I wouldn't invest my audit account. Right. Thank you. Can, can, I, can I interrupt here with a personal opinion? Uh, sorry, Jining, I, I just want to. Sure, sure, go ahead. I would like to share that I think the world after COVID 19, many people will realize that real estate is not so valuable anymore in terms of commercial real estate i think never in our life we we ever thought that we can do without office but now we're all working from home we can do without office again we think that retail is is uh, good to have uh, online is good to have but nowadays retail is must only be done on online and after all the all the retailers start going online they realize that hey you know i don't really need a the fiscal space, you know, pay the renter and all this. Um, where I'm coming from is that the world of post-COVID-19, I think real estate, commercial real estate is not so valuable anymore. I am not so sanguine about uh, REITs uh, for that reason, but that's my personal opinion. Okay, thank Great you, Mr. Luke. <laughs> Yeah, feel free to chime in whenever you have uh, something to you feel you want to voice your opinion. Okay, Mr. Lu. Okay, now the next question comes from uh, JP. He's asking if I have excess cash now and I'm fifty one, can I transfer like one hundred k into CPF and then at fifty five I withdraw uh, the hundred k plus interest? Uh, just like fix D lah, <laughs> Mr. So. Um. So you have this uh, cash. You can put it into your your special account. Uh, there's a limit, which is the uh, full retirement sum, the difference between the full retirement sum and and um, your balance. So that at fifty five, then uh, we'll transfer this. Uh, uh, we look at what you have in your ordinary and special account. We'll transfer it into the retirement account. If there's a leftover um, in your ordinary and special account, which may be more than hundred k, you know, <laughs> so you can withdraw that. So it depends on your, how much you have in your, your balances. So I can't answer your questions perspective without knowing the, your balances. Okay, got it, Jake. Thank you, Mr. So. Okay, next question uh, is asked by Yo. Yo is asking, what is the assurance that the current 2.5 and 4% will continue, especially for our children? Oh, this is uh, probably one of the most uh, commonly asked questions every talk that I gave. So first, the uh, 2.5%, which is uh, uh, the minimum uh, interest that uh, is paid on the CPF account. It's paid on the ordinary account and actually applies to all the other accounts as well. Special account, retirement account, uh, medicine account. So this uh, minimum 2.5% uh, is uh, enshrined in the CPF Act. And uh, it's been there uh, for the last uh, 65 years as a uh, as, uh, CPF itself. Uh, so uh you ask uh, what assurance you can give uh, um, the, the the assurance is that it's in, in the act you ask uh, can it change or any uh, policy in uh, in singapore can technically be, be changed even the constitution can be changed of course there are different uh, different uh, safeguards in, in place uh, but it has not been changed for the last uh, 65 years will it change going forward uh, that's uh, anybody's uh, guess uh, so uh, there's great assurance uh, uh, because it's in the CPF Act. Um, the four percent, the four percent is paid on the um, special medicine and the retirement account. Is 
on the other hand, it's not it's not in the CPF Act, and uh, so in the sense it is a uh, administrative uh, government policy. Um, so, but twelve thirteen years ago, the government has announced uh, that the long term policy is to move it move the uh, rate away from this four percent. Four percent is uh, one point five percent plus the two point five percent, right? But more to pack it to pack the uh, this uh special medisave retirement account which are long-term accounts to long-term rates of comparable risk and they are looking at uh, something like the uh, singapore government bonds use a 10-year bond which is a, a liquid bond that that then and add one percentage point to mimic right to approximate the return on the something like a 30-year bond so this is a, a policy direction uh, that but because uh, there was this a four percent interest minimum uh, paid then so the government announced that uh, every year you will review whether this four uh, percent will remain and so for the past uh, 12 13, 13 years uh, the decision has been you will remain so it's still the case uh, currently that means until the end of uh, this year it will you will be uh, at least four uh, percent so going forward is it is there a possibility that the four percent may be removed yes if there's a possibility if it if it happens then uh, you still have the 2.5 percent right the special account maybe save account the time account will still be guaranteed at least a 2.5 percent and then what is the actual interest rate will be paid then you'll be based on this uh, uh long-term government bond rate 10 year bond plus one percent which may be more than four percent or which may be less than four percent uh okay Thank you, Mr. So. At this point in time, usually Lou has uh, something come, come in. So can I invite Lou to chip in? <laughs> Mr. Lou, <laughs> you're wanted. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. What's the question? Sorry, what's the whether question? The, whether the, the CPF interest rate guarantee of 2.5% or 4% can be assured. Oh, that's a great question. Okay. Uh, the, the, okay, so Mr. So cannot answer this question. Uh, uh, can I answer this question uh, in a politically uh, unacceptable way? But I can. Okay, so I think I think let's let's get let's be let's talk about chances. Okay, so first of all, if the CPF uh, first, of all, if you look at history, there are more occurrence of CPF rates going up than down. So we have got a CPF rate starting at two ordinary at two point five percent, then increased by one percent um for the first sixty thousand, and then when you reach 55 you uh, get an extra percent for the first thirty thousand dollars so the trend has been trying to push the cpf interest rate up what's the chance of it going down um can it happen yes it may happen but for that to happen there will be a public outcry so if the government have has to do it we have to think of what's the environment then you know, it, even currently in the near Armageddon kind of situation in the business world, in the post-COVID-19 world, the government has not even talked about lowering the, the CPF interest rate. So for CPF interest rate to go down, it must be a near nuclear holocaust kind of environment. So I think if that day were to happen, you will be the CPF interest rate will last thing that you worry. You'll be worrying about other things. And there'll be probably no, no other investment that you can find that, that can give you something more attractive anyway so you are probably stuck with your cpf anyway so so for that i've been hearing this argument for many years uh, 20 over years so uh, i've you know chosen to take a belief and i uh, profited from it so uh, it's up to you to believe but i think the chances of uh, it going down it's uh, considerably low thank you mr lu thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh no, i hope you had a chance to have a sip of water because you have been answering questions non-stop from nine o'clock until nine forty-five. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what's the next question? Uh, is by VJB. He is asking, or she is asking, when putting money into children's CPF account, can it be just channeled into SA, or it must be split into three accounts always? Yeah, you can. The same options apply whether it's a uh, a child or an adult you can uh, just put it just into the sa that's option one option two you can put in the three accounts option three you can put into the medisafe uh, i don't suppose your child will have used 
or they account for housing. So probably housing refund is out. So you have three, three choices. Right. Thank you. And uh, he, he or she also asked, is it true that the maximum tax relief for CPF top up is only $7,000 a year and the rest of the cash top up will not be tax deductible? Yeah, that's right. Um, if you put the money into your for retirement purposes um, for a for, um, special account or retirement account for yourself or for your, your loved ones, means your, your parents or your spouse if it's not working, then you get tax relief. Um, you get the tax relief of a seven thousand dollars a year for yourself. Means if you put it for your for your own uh, account, and you have another seven thousand if you put in for your loved ones. So all in is a fourteen thousand dollars max a year. So if a tax consideration is the uh, chief consideration, then you want to you may want to consider putting in um, in the sense of stream, streaming it in uh, every year. Put in a not more than. 7,000 or more, more than 14,000, then you every year you can get the tax relief. Conversely, yeah. if you're more interested in the interest rate, then you better put in a big amount and you know that not, not the full amount will get the tax relief. Right, thank you. And let's move on. Now, uh, John is asking, any advice for a high-earning young professional? How best to utilize CPF given the time and money is on one's side um consider what uh, mr lu is advocating build up build up your safety net uh through the cpf the special account right then uh, then if you have more then you can consider investing your funds if uh, uh, you settle your housing equation and i think the, the key thesis uh, those key thesis which i agree is that uh, uh, the two are related, right? Uh, investing, while well, it can potentially um, get you higher return, is a can be a very emotionally uh, disturbing or draining thing. And where can it really help is then if you know that you you have a safety net. Should uh, something go wrong with the investment, you can still fall back on the safety net. Then it does a lot to your emotion. It calms your nerves and it helps you uh, be a better investor. And the CPF can can play play that role because. It is uh, guaranteed. It will not uh, go away. The, even the interest rate is guaranteed. So if you if you have a long runway, you you have a you have some something like a, a quarter of a million dollars. You know that by sixty five, you have a million dollars. So you have that fat cushion down there. So that can give you the the guts for you to invest uh, very co confidently. Right. Thank you. Okay, now the next question is from Chris. Okay, a little bit complicated. Huh? Let's see. Huh? Chris asks, Hi, my currently my wife is below 55. CPF is below FRS. Based on your presentation, we can top up her CPF by cash, transfer from his CPF account, or refund from property. So what are the pros and cons of these few methods? If you, if you top up, the uh, wife's uh, special account, um, it it earns um, four percent interest uh, compared to if you uh, do a cash uh, housing refund because the money goes into the for housing refund the money goes into the uh, ordinary account instead of special account so the interest rate is uh, different for this two option if it goes into the uh, for special account right you do this uh, RSTU. You can also get the tax relief if uh, your wife is uh, not non working. Uh, well, for housing refund, there is no uh, tax relief. Of course, uh, if the consideration is uh, for property, right? You want to put, you want to do the housing refund, and then you have plans to buy a, a property in future. Or your wife has planned to buy a, a property in future. Then um, housing refund may be uh, preferred. So it depends on the. Uh, uh, what is your plans, your intention, your objective, and then you work out which one which one uh, works well for you. Um, you. You can also transfer your your CPF into your your spouse. You need to have the uh, basic retirement sum, half of the full retirement sum for yourself, and then you transfer over. Um, if your wife um, has very low balances, and you're transferring over an amount, an amount which earns attracts the extra interest 
is a beneficial. If you look at it as a, a family unit, you have a relatively high balance. You already have the extra interest, right? So the amount you're transferring is not attracting extra interest. But if you transfer over to your wife with a very low balance, and the amount, once it goes in the wife's balance, able to attract the extra interest. So overall, your uh, the couple level, your effective interest rate will be higher. So that's a, that will be an advantage of uh, transferring your CPF to your wife. Okay, thank you, Mr. So. Now, next question comes from Colin. Um, he's asking, is SA shielding this hack legit by uh, CPF? I mean, do they consider it okay or they don't want it or something like that. And then whether CPF will subsequently transfer the SA after 55 years old uh, to RA account. I suppose it's after shielding. Yeah, will, it, will they transfer the balance into the RA account? Uh, it's, uh, it's legit, um, totally legit. So then uh, will they transfer? So if, if uh, the person already had met the full retirement sum, then uh, you won't you won't you won't be transferred any further once the uh, SA returns after the shielding. Right. Okay. Thank you. Ah. Okay. Philip is asking if he has selected basic plan for his CPF life, can he request to change it to standard plan? Oh no. Answer is uh, no. Uh, so please uh, consider your CPF life plans uh, carefully. Um, the different plan has a different uh, degree of uh, amortization, so um, the, the risk pooling effects is uh, different. So we don't allow people to uh, switch switch plans. Okay, thank you. And uh, Daryl is asking, what happens if after using SA shielding, OA and uh, SA OA and forty k in SA does not meet the FRS requirement? Will the money liquidated from the SA investment be transferred to RA after meeting the FRS? Yeah, so um, it's uh, possible. So um, at fifty-five, you may not have the hundred. You may not have the full retirement sum in your retirement account, whether you do SA shielding or not, right? Because we look at the, how much you have in your ordinary account and special account. We allow up to the first five thousand. We allow it to be withdrawn, right? So any amount. In excess of the five thousand, we put into the retirement account. So this amount may be less than the full retirement sum. So for somebody turning fifty-five this year, it may be less than one hundred eighty-one thousand. In which case, you are said to have a, a shortfall, a shortfall of the full retirement sum account. So then um, you continue after fifty-five. You may continue to work. If you have done SA shielding, you may put back the money back into the SA and, and, and so on. Uh, then what happened is that at, at 65, in a sense, uh, that we call it a second sweep. We'll, 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 we'll re redo what we have done at 55. We'll look at the amount that you have in your special account and audit account. Right? If there is a shortfall, we'll take the money and put it in the retirement account to make up this uh, full retirement sum. So it's, uh, it's possible, to your question, it's possible that some of the monies may, be, may go into the retirement account after all. Okay, thank you. And uh, ET is asking, uh, can you explain how the housing refund works? What happens to the ownership of my property? Do I have to put in cash? The ownership of a property doesn't change. So maybe I'll give you an example. You have uh, used uh, $100,000 in your ordinary account for the house. The 100000 may comprise of uh, uh, some amounts for the down payment of the house, some for the mortgage payments, right? And then uh, there's also the <clears throat> component of a uh, accrued interest, interest which you have earned had you not withdrawn the hundred thousand. And so let's say the hundred thousand, the accrued interest is a uh, twenty thousand. Hello, Mr. So. I think we lost you. Can you still hear me? Hi, Mr. So. I'm 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 I
I think the internet is bad. Yeah. On his side. Yes. <laughs> Mr. So, uh, we just wait for a while for hopefully your internet connection to become normalized. Testing. I can't hear what. Okay. Hmm. Can you repeat the question again? Maybe I help to answer. Okay. And then uh, while we try to get um, uh, Mr. So back. Okay. Let me get the question. Huh? Can we jump the next question first. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Let's go for this the next one. Is, okay. For Chris Ng from Telegram Group, can yep. we? Okay, no, that one already answered. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, HL is asking if I invest in stocks using OA funds under CPFIS, can I transfer the stocks to CDP after 55? A bit technical. I don't know whether you know the answer. Well, I don't really know, but um, but there's not there's probably there's there's probably well no no I'm pretty sure you can't because uh, what they will have to make sure you do is that you will probably have to sell. I mean, if you really the stocks are in CPFIS, then after you because that that is using your CPF OA, they want to make sure that the the money if you sell it goes back to your OA first. Uh, before you, uh, before you, you, you can withdraw them. So I think uh, the the world is kept very clear between the cash uh, shares and CPF shares. Right. Okay. Let me see if I can do something to his one. Okay. Okay. Hang on, let me just give a few statements to come in. Okay. Okay, okay let me find the next question. Coincidentally, we're also reaching the time of ending, but we will still try to connect back to Mr. So, if possible. Uh, okay, um, Ravindran is asking, uh, can I top up the CPF for my mom, who is already 71? Uh, I believe so. You can still top it up. Um, there's the first $7,000 is, first $7,000 is a uh, tax, uh, you can claim for tax relief on that. Uh, yes, you can because I've been doing that for my dad, and he was way above. Uh, he was way above uh, seventy plus years old uh, when that happens. So the answer is yes, you can do that. Great, thank you. Okay, let me see. Hello, can you hear me? Oh yes, yes. Yeah, so welcome back. <laughs> okay, Wonderful. so back to you, um, uh, uh, Chining. Sorry, I don't know where I was uh, when it got disconnected. I yeah, was no in a housing refund example. Yes, you are at a housing maybe, refund. Maybe I, I repeat the example. I um, was referring yes. to somebody, uh, basic, basically the housing refund doesn't change the ownership of the property. It just determines how much uh, CPF you, can, uh, you have to put back if you should sell your property. So I gave the example that somebody who has a uh, use a hundred thousand dollars in of his audit account for his property and uh, accrued interest is uh, twenty thousand so the total is hundred and twenty thousand dollars if he decide to let's say put back uh, fifty thousand dollars as housing refund then the hundred and twenty thousand reduces to seventy thousand so he sell the, the property then he put back seventy thousand instead of hundred and twenty thousand because he has already put back 50,000 earlier. So I hope with this example is uh, clear what the housing refund does. 
Right, thank you. And uh, Philip is asking, will there be tax relief if we top up parents' RSS? Yes, uh, the tax relief is uh, for parents is uh, up to uh, $7,000 a year for topping up into the retirement account, uh, up to the full retirement sum. Then uh, whether it is RSS, the retirement sum scheme, or CPF life, the that's depends on the, the choice that the, the parent make. Right. Okay, let me see. Because of time, it's already 10 o'clock, so I'll be picking uh, one or two last questions to from the questions. Okay, let me see. Hmm. Okay, this uh, question comes from Hunujia. If I have spare cash, should I top up my SA first or do housing refund first? <laughs> um, it depends on your objective. If your objective is uh, for retirement, then uh, top up your, your SA. Uh, if it is for housing, you are thinking of uh, uh, your next property purchase, then uh, uh, do a housing uh, refund. And take note of the, the different characteristics of this uh, option. The interest rate is uh, different. Uh, topping up to the SA earns you 4%. Topping up to the OA only 2.5%. Uh, topping up to the SA with cash, you may get the tax relief. So it really depends on uh, what, what is it you are after. Right, thank you. Okay, now uh, just now Chris was saying that uh, his uh, uh, question was chop off uh, whether if he were to do voluntary contribution to the children's CPF, can the funds be directed to specific accounts? Uh, just a quick answer. The answer is yes. Okay, yes. so with that, I'd like to take uh, one last question and then we will wrap up the webinar for tonight. Okay. Um, Okay, Philip is asking from, now we switch back the channel into the Telegram group. Huh? Uh, Philip is asking, my mom's RSS only have uh, 20,000. Willing to top up seven, will topping up 7K affect her government relief that she's getting? Government relief? I'm not too sure what government uh, relief uh, she's, uh, ah. she's uh, talking about. Um, okay. it, it, may, it may be that um, some of the schemes, let's say, administered by the Ministry of Social and Family, they will look at uh, what are the, some of the means available to the, to already available to recipient, uh, children support, or CPF balances, so uh, before they decide how much uh, relief to, to give. So it, it may, be, may be possible, but I'm not in a position to, to say whether it definitely will, will affect or not. Okay, no so, problem. Yeah, so check, check with, the, with the ministry involved. Okay, thank you. Okay, last question from Robin. He's saying that he used his CPF OA to pay for his HDB flat, which has been fully paid. And he's now more than 70 years old. Should I sell my HDB flat? And would the proceeds from the sale go to my OA, which... I would able would which would I be able to withdraw? Uh, whether he should sell the HDB or not is uh, for him to, to to decide. And of course, uh, the next question is uh, if he sell, then where would he live? You know, uh, so I, I wouldn't be able to advise. Um, should he decide to sell the the, the flat? The, the same rules apply. Um, the the money that is a uh, used to for to help fund the property comes from the ordinary account. So if he's if he should to sell the property, um, amount will go back to the ordinary account. How much you will have to go back is uh, whatever he has uh, used plus accrued interest. He can find the answer in the in the CPF website if you log in with uh, SingPass to FA. The only difference is that because he's uh, above 55, in a sense there's extra step. Uh, after the money has uh, come back into his uh, ordinary account, we will see whether he has uh, met his uh, minimum sum, his, uh, his full retirement sum. If he has already met, then actually that's it. The money goes, there's no, no further step. The money re remains in the ordinary account. 
if he has not met the full retirement sum and there's a, a, a shortfall, then we'll take part of the proceeds that are going to the audit account and put into the retirement sum to make up the full retirement sum. So whatever monies that remains in the audit account, because it's already past uh, 55, he can, he can withdraw uh, immediately. Great. And with that last question, we have come to the end of tonight's webinar. Indeed, it is a fair our pleasure and our privilege to have Mr. So to share with us his insights, uh, taking his precious time from his uh, evening to share with us, right? And also Mr. Lu for sharing with us about his uh, 1M65. And a last call for everyone who is attending to join Mr. Lu's uh, 1M65 Telegram group chat. Look for Lu 1M65 and you'll be able to go in because I'm sure as we continue our journey uh, in life and as we approach 55 and beyond, there'll be more questions that will come up and with a support group uh, in a Telegram chat that Mr. Lu has set up uh, we can help each other out inside that Terrigan group. Okay, so uh, Mr. So, thank you so much for your time. And would you have any last words with our attendees? Oh, just uh, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for uh, this uh, participation. And I hope uh, there's many questions. I hope uh, they will answer uh, the questions uh, satisfactorily. Thanks also to uh, Lou and uh, to Richard for putting this uh, webinar together. I wish everybody a very uh, successful financial journey and importantly, a life journey as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. So. Thank you so Thank much. You have you have any any yeah. last words with the attendees? Okay, wonderful. And uh, with that, we'll end tonight's webinar. For those of you who have registered, we'll be sending out the replay a recording to you. And uh, wish you a good night and have a good long weekend. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs> good night.